Here is a mini PC that I imported from AliExpress. It is a Aostar, 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 Aostar mini PC. Uh, I bought it myself off of AliExpress from a seller. It arrived very quick. Uh, if you guys are interested in this one, I will put some links down below for AliExpress for that seller. I don't know about other ones, but I'll put them for that seller. Uh, obviously, I have no affiliation with these guys. They probably don't even know that I exist. Another cool thing about this mini PC is it's a very mini PC. We'll see when we get here. Yeah, it's a tiny little thing. Little charger here. What's the watts on this? 120 watts. So that's obviously a GAN charger, gallium nitride charger, because it's quite small. This is the type of thing you could take somewhere. I mean, obviously if you have it set up, I like the clean setup of that. I'm very tempted to turn this into my daily. Honestly, going forward, uh, you know, I have other PCs as well, but this thing is just, it's such an aesthetic little thing. It's really nice, good for travel, pop it out. Maybe you do travel a lot and then you stay somewhere for you know longer period of time. You could take this, you know, set it up and have a pretty good on the go setup. But I mean, it's also just a nice little thing to set down there. So a nice metal design, right? That's all metal, feeling very premium. Big open sides, which is good. I don't want this thing to be closed off. It's a PC, I need airflow. On the back here, we have a little bit of ventilation. We have two faster USB-C display and HDMI, so two display out, two LAN ports. So you have some redundancy, you plug one in, let's say your cord goes down, you have the second one, it's good, power there. And then on this side, this is where things get really interesting. Two more fast USB-A, that's fantastic, headphone, whatever. You have a USB-4 port there. So you can hook up not only, you know, just generic whatever type stuff, you can hook up docks. This thing does have pretty good ports, as you can see, but more is better, right? So you can hook in something like this, a little guy like that. You can also hook up an eGPU. This here is one. I actually have several of them. I have another one. This one here is a 7600M XT. For people who don't know AMD, that'll give you around 4060 performance. So, I mean, the eGPU in here is very capable, very very capable for iGPU accelerated tasks, such as gaming. It's not gonna match up with a 7600 MXT, obviously. Plug that in there, and all of a sudden you have good performance. You don't get all the bandwidth out of a USB 4, so you will lose a little bit of performance out of this. You know, maybe this, if it's at 100, maybe you'd get 80% or something like that over USB 4. That's where things get really interesting. That's an Oculink port, Oculink, allows you to hook up an eGPU, and it actually goes over the PCI lanes and it has higher bandwidth than USB 4. What does that mean? What does bandwidth mean? It means you don't lose as much performance. And other factors, basically in my testing, especially with a CPU like this, you're generally speaking gonna be looking at almost 100% performance. I've tested Oculink with up to a 5080 desktop, 5080, and the performance was exceptionally good. Just you get the thing and you just open it. That's my way. That's the tinkerer's way. Oh, there we go. Okay, so uh, we have some antennas there. Be careful when you take that off. I actually almost tore that because I wasn't looking. I was looking at the camera. Uh, you do not want to tear those antennas. Those are for your Wi-Fi. Very cool. So we have a giant fan here. We have our CMOS battery. Very good, coin cell battery. Big, big, big fan there. Okay, this one's a little tough to get. You just want like maybe some thinner pliers and those crocodile jaws that I had. Okay, so that's good. Yeah, and there you go. So underneath there, just take your time, be very gentle. And there you go. That looks nice. So, I mean, it's not as easy to get into as some mini PCs, but there's a different language going on here. And that is that this is a very, very, very small mini PC that's packed full of all kinds of goodness. So, yeah, I'm okay with that. Honestly, it's relatively easy to get into for what it is. So I'll just do a quick upgrade here. Uh, the RAM is soldered. So I guess if they do offer this with like, I don't know, 64 or something, you could do it. Okay, and I am just getting it set up right now. I just wanted to quickly pop in here and just show you. Uh, it does have a very clean set of windows here. There's like nothing on it, no bloat. If you are going to be using this for gaming with the iGPU, you can come into your BIOS uh, when you're booting it up. Uh, you come over here to advanced, advanced, graphics configuration, enter, frame buffer size. Frame buffer size is how much VRAM, so how much 
RAM your GPU is going to use. This GPU is quite powerful uh, for an iGPU. Four gigabytes is not going to be enough. If you're using it just for day-to-day -day stuff, uh, you're not doing gaming on this at all. You're just, you know, doing generic stuff. This is going to be enough. If you're doing video editing or gaming, I would recommend putting it to eight gigabytes. That will steal it from your system memory. So your system memory is 32. You're going to steal eight. So rather than having 32 available for Windows, you're basically going to have uh, 26 is essentially how that's gonna work there. There are a couple different power modes in here. We will play with them, but you can see here there is a balanced mode and there is, that's how it came. There's performance and manual, that's interesting. Uh, it's the same power limit. I'm gonna go balance this to start. We're gonna test it and then I'll come back and I'll go back to performance. Uh, you can set a peak package limit here. I guess if you don't want it to go to its peak, you could say whatever, like disable 70, 80, 90. Uh, it depends on the cooling. This chip can easily do these. It's not gonna damage the chip. I actually went into the BIOS and I put it into that performance mode and uh, I did some tests first. This is not just me winging it here. I've already checked a couple things here. So I went into the BIOS mode. I put it into performance mode. Uh, here is performance mode. And we can see that the watts here are stable at 65 and the peak was 70. Uh, the score here, uh, it was it's 22,000, it's on its like second run there. Uh, it's definitely noisier and it's definitely pulling more watts. In the balanced mode here, where are we here? Uh, it was peaking at 65 and sitting more at 60 watts, something like that. And the noise profile uh, was quieter, but it was also getting a lower score. The score was about 20,000. Here, on that performance mode, quite a bit louder and scores of 22,000 or so and like I said 65 and 70 so let's just stop this I'm just going to reboot it you guys will just have a quick start and we'll look what it looks like when it's on its balanced mode okay so now we're back we're on that balanced mode this is the stock this is what it came with and let's check this now so if you remember the wattages let's go like that wattage is there immediately up to 65 on performance it was going higher 70 ish 70 75 and you can see here it's dropping down so it runs around 10 watts lower 53 but you'll see here when we get to the scores it's not going to make a huge difference but it does it does matter noise is much lower it was 43 44 even 45 Right now we're at 3738. I consider sub 40 dB to be quiet, generally speaking. Score here, this is just one run, 2140. So I mean, you're gaining five to 10% uh, by adding, I guess, probably around 20% more watts. I mean, 10-ish watts, something like that. Uh, but you're only getting a few extra points on Cinebench there, like an extra thousand. I mean, if you really need it, sure. Uh, but one of the benefits of the CPU is it's very efficient. Okay, we're back one more time. So now we're on silent mode. Again, we could do custom as well, uh, which you could do, but we're just gonna go silent here. Go like that there. Let's check what kind of performance difference we get. Again, another 10 watts down. Now we're at 46 peak. And the average looks like it's about 37. Uh, this is going to be viable, I can guarantee you, before we even get there, because again, I've tested this in a couple of laptops that are lower wattage laptops that sit, you know, around here anyways, and I've tested some handhelds. I mean, I own a handheld with this in it, and it only goes up to 30 anyways, so. We dropped out one more dB. Before it was 38 point something, now we're at 37. Performance now, let's check again. Again, we can do multiple runs, but now we're down to 20,000. So we've dropped off another 10 or 15% there. Uh, we are at lower watts. Again, it's efficient chip. That just really shows you how efficient this chip is. But the noise profile has not changed much. We're only down 1 dB. So it really sounds pretty much the same. So I do think that the custom, uh, you know, playing around with it's probably not that required. Um, the balance mode seems to be kind of the sweet spot for it. Alrighty, let's just check out some quick benchmarks here. Nothing special, just 
kind of show what's up. So SSDs and such. So SSDs and such. The included SSD is just a crucial drive. Uh, P3 Plus, I believe that would be. So that's a Gen 5, Gen 4 drive. Kind of mid-range, just a generic Gen 4 drive. Totally fine. Good. Good to see any brand in there. Wi-Fi is fast. That's literally as fast as my Wi-Fi goes. So you, I can't say anything negative about it because it just isn't going faster. Now, in the front, of course, we do have a, if I load, USB 4. USB 4 will allow you to run things like this. This is an NVMe enclosure. This is where I do all my video editing on. Uh, very, very, very fast, you know, upper Gen 3 speeds. So you're going to be able to do things like that. Really, really utilize that. If you don't have a ton of internal storage, it's okay because you can run, you know, those type of enclosures. You can also run EG, uh, you can also run uh, USB 4 docks like this here, where you're going to be able to dramatically increase the, you know, the amount of ports and that that you'd get on that mini PC. You could hook this in there and then still hook in more devices in there. So uh, it's a really, really, it's really, really important in my opinion to have USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4, whichever, basically everywhere. Every device should really have it because it just dramatically increases what you can do with it. So overall, I mean, all the benchmarks here look pretty good. I mean, as expected. Now, what I think we should do is jump into some game tests. Uh, the reason is it will give us a really good understanding of the CPU and GPU performance. And interestingly, I think that is one of the more compelling parts of this mini PC. Here's where things get really interesting, and that's gaming. So this here has the AMD Ryzen AI HX370, very powerful CPU. What is most impressive for this segment here is that it does come with the 890M iGPU. The A90M iGPU is currently AMD's most powerful iGPU. I don't really count the 8060S or whatever. It's because it's, I mean, it is an iGPU. It's kind of also not. So this is going to be very, very, very good here. Uh, we'll do a little 1080p. You can do a lot of 1440p on this uh, iGPU. Uh, depends on the game. This is Doom the Dark Ages, which is brutal to run. Uh, so we're going to not do that to start here. We're gonna just go with low and we're gonna go FSR balanced 1080p just to start. And I'll just show you guys that this thing is pretty good, I guess. We'll just show you what you guys can do here. And get my key. Give me that key. So, and this is no frame gen yet. Oh, I guess I should run. Oh, that's not, how do you do it again? I don't remember. Oh, you have to actually put your sigil over there. Yeah, so you can see here, I mean, during the dark ages, uh, we're going to be, you know, looking at pretty decent frame rates. This is just balanced FSR. You can throw on, I would actually use XCSS, but whatever. You can turn on more scaling. You can turn on frame gen. I'm just starting here with the most brutal game by far, just for a case in point, just to kind of show what we can do here. And I mean, you're going to be doing pretty good. You're not going to get, you know, your 60 in a game like this. Uh, but you're going to do pretty good. The reason I'm doing Doom is because I'm actually going to show you guys a D GPU, des dedicated graphics after as well. Okay, let's try some Cyberpunk here. This game is actually going to run pretty well. So we're going to be on, we'll just do 1080p low for now. Uh, with a little bit of scaling, balanced scaling. And I'll just show you guys. Now this is the Phantom Liberty expansion, which is horrendous to run. And uh, yeah, how's that performance? Again, this is the same iGPU that I use in my primary uh, gaming handheld that I do like most of my gaming on. You can use frame gen, you can use less scaling, but I just wanted to get you guys an idea of what this kind of looks like here. Above 60 uh, from time to time, sitting at 56 average, 31 lows in this area especially is really good. Uh, we'll come out here. Let's go in here and you'll watch the performance go way up. So. Yeah, this is like an actual gaming PC. It's not a gaming per like it's hard to say. It's not designed for gaming PC. You know, it's not really designed for that, but it at the same time it kind of is because I mean, all of these dedicated gaming handhelds, uh, you know, the best, the best of the best uh, on the market right now use the same iGPU and the same exact CPU, and all the new ones coming out from Lenovo and MSI and whatever uh, using AMD are going to be using this iGPU. They use slightly different CPU, but same iGPU. And so, I mean, yeah, we're getting seriously dedicated gaming hardware with the same performance. Remember when I said things were gonna get cool? Well, this mini PC has Oculink. It does have USB 4, so you can hook up an eGPU over USB 4, such as this AU Star, same brand, isn't that cool? Over USB 4. So some devices don't have this over here, USB 4. 
but this mini PC has Oculink. Oculink, you can see here, you have one or the other on this eGPU by the same brand. I bought this as well. Oculink offers considerably higher bandwidth than USB 4. USB 4, I mean, yeah, you get you get good performance, but you're probably looking at you know losing 30%, maybe even 40% on a performance of a GPU, which is still fantastic realistically, but you're still losing that performance. Oculink will perform very similar to just straight performance, especially on something like this. This is an RTX 4070 Super hooked up to this here. I would you know normally have this tucked behind there, but I wanted to do it for the video. Hooked up over Oculink here. And now, and now, and now, we're playing Doom, the Dark Ages, at 1440p, Nightmare, because why not? This CPU is very powerful, by the way. I've done a lot of testing. I think in other videos, just generally speaking, uh, it's able to easily drive a 4070 Super because I can find I found that it's able to drive a. Oops, I'm, I found that it's able to drive a uh, 40 uh, 5080 actually 5080. So 4070 Super is nothing for it. 5080 I've actually been able to drive easily with this uh, iGPU as well. I feel like I did it with this mini PC like for a different video? I can't remember. Uh, anyways, so you're not gonna have any problems, especially at 1440p or 4K. I mean, now we're playing at ultra uh, 1440p and we're getting 80 FPS. So this mini PC is sick on its own, just as it stands, right? It's just a really, really, really good mini PC. You're gonna get great performance out of really every aspect of it. The CPU is very performant. Uh, you know, good port selection runs relatively cool, relatively quiet. It's just a great mini PC on its own. The iGPU in there is fantastic. You can do things like video coding on it, no problem. It's very powerful. You can do a lot of gaming on that uh, AMD 890M. It's a really good iGPU, technically the best like real iGPU on the market right now. Awesome. But then you can also either use USB 4 to hook up to an eGPU, or I would highly recommend a Oculink based one because Oculink is gonna give you very close to max raw performance, right? Leverage yourself a GPU like this, like a 4070 Super, uh, 7800 XT, something like that. You know, it doesn't cost an absolute freaking fortune. Like I said, you can drive a 5080 with this. So don't be like, I can't, you know, go all the way up the stack. You can, I don't know about a 4090, 5090, but you can definitely drive a 5080. I've done it. Uh, so very, very, very powerful. So the mini PC is sick. I mean, on its own, it's a great mini PC. It's just an awesome product, but then being able to massively improve its performance by, you know, hooking it up to Oculink. I want to see more and more and more Oculink or Thunderbolt 5, but for now, Oculink is where it's at right now as it stands, and you're just really able to get, you know, a dock like this for not super expensive, not exactly super cheap, but it's also not super expensive, an eGPU like that, a GPU like that, set up an eGPU setup and turn this thing into, you know, a video encoding rendering monster, gaming, tiny little beast there. So pretty awesome there. So that's the AOS Star right there. Awesome little guy. You're, I mean, you're, you're going to be happy with this product. It's a really, really good product.